What's up guys, FM Campbell here and welcome to episode number 10 of the Aston Villa series. If you want to check out episode number 9, link will be in the description just in case you've missed anything. Now, straight in, a consortium takeover is in place. Yes, someone has made a bid, well I say someone, it's been a consortium of businessmen, at, or businessmen, businessmen and a potential former footballer. So, fingers crossed this goes through fingers crossed we get some money and they're a really nice board and they really like us and they don't want to sack us and all that good stuff um yeah so there's loads of positive loads of negative as i said just a second ago uh, they could sack us that's the that's the worst scenario um second worst scenario is they could come in place they can come into the, the club and have no money whatsoever that's not great because we need some investment in this club and in this team massively um, we are planning to sell some players, which I will go through shortly um, in, with you guys and then do a little bit of a season summary as well. Um, some of the uh, positives to it, obviously they have money. Um, the direction of the club moves forward. They may want to change um, some of the targets as well that may be more or either more realistic or um, would be great for the club going forward. Like They may want to invest in the, in the staff, in the facilities, in the ground, stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, worst scenario is, is they slack us. Hopefully they don't, but it will be very cheap for them to do so. So um, it's kind of 50-50. If they have money, yes, it's great because they, they we can invest. If But it also makes it very easy for them to sack us. <laughs> so it could go either way. Um, a couple of people have asked me in the links, uh, sorry, in the links, in the descriptions of previous videos in the comment sections, um, if I am sacked, Will I carry on this save? Yes, I will. We will become unemployed. It will be no longer be we will no longer be Aston Villa manager, and we'll be on the job hunt. So no fear, uh, this will this series will continue, um, but it just probably will end up at a different club, and we'll try and build ourselves somewhere else, and might actually turn up to be a journeyman save. We never know. Um, but yeah, going forward, let's find out what's been going on throughout the season. So we had four games left of the season, um, as you can see. We started off at Newcastle, where the poor form continued. Um, Mainly due to the team morale, in my opinion. Uh, mainly due to Christian Benteke, which if you haven't seen episode number nine, you need to do so because it is just a rant against Benteke because I cannot stand him. Um, I'll go into Benteke. There's been updates since then. Uh, I'll go into that in a second. Uh, but we drew nil nil with Newcastle. A board draw. Fabian Delph was also injured, so nothing happened at Villa Park. So only a single point. <clears throat> we then had a big game against Everton, and it was huge. I'm talking... The decision between 6th and 7th was, was almost in the works. Now, they beat us 4-1. Grealish with the only goal. It was Lukaku with two. Morales and Baines. Oh, Lukaku. I absolutely love to sign Lukaku on this. I signed him for United in the previous, um, say, one of the previous series that I did at the beginning of FM15. And he's an absolute beast. I'd love to sign him again. But we can't afford players like him at the moment. Anyway, West Brom. We then beat 2-1. Yes, beat. We actually won a game. We went seven games without a win and finally beat our rivals, West Brom, our local rivals. Jack Grealish. Uh, sorry, I'm still on Everton. I believe it was... Uh, Zapata with two, actually, with both of the goals. Um, we got the winner in the sixth, uh, 76th minute after a, after equalising in the 56th minute after a Yusuf Malumbu goal in the first minute of added time of the first half. So we finally got a win on the books. After so long, my God, it was an absolute relief. Um, we then played QPR on the last day of the season, away from home at Loftus Road. So Patter again with two goals, so get four goals in two games. Um, we, he scored in the 20th and 25th minute. Then Vargas equalised in the 31st, and then sorry, Vargas got one back in the 31st, and then Sandro equalised in the 46th minute. Now, this is where it left us in the league. Everton must have gone through some poor form myself. They actually ended up five points behind us. And they were eight points behind us in episode number eight. They were six points behind us in episode number nine. And this episode, they were only five. So they were, they did catch us a little bit, um, as did Liverpool, who were ten points behind us in the end. But we managed to take sixth place quite comfortably. Miles off fifth, who were Arsenal, and they finished 12 points ahead. Um, so that's a little bit of a concern. And the goal difference was only plus four, which was also a concern um, Liverpool actually stole the Europa League spot from Everton as they won the FA Cup so we'll go in, into the schedule and we'll 
show you um, the FA Cup. So Liverpool actually won it 5 0. They battered Arsenal, absolutely tore them apart. Um, the Capital One Cup was won by City. We still have the Champions League game to play. I'm not 100% sure when that is. The transfer window starts on the 9th, um, but I'll go into that in a second. Um, so let's just do a little bit of a seasonal review. Um, then I'll go. Actually, no, we'll talk about Benteke first. Benteke has then said to me, oh, I'm happy to stay at the club after moaning about leaving. Um, I think currently um, he's wanted by. No, he's not wanted by anyone at the moment. That's strange. Is he? I'm sure. No, he's not wanted by anyone. So, anyway, yeah, I think it's because no one was interested in him anymore. Anyway, I'll just get this bit of news come through. Benteke happy to stay at the club. Brilliant. So now he's happy to stay again. So the team morale is going to be affected again. So just play, he's playing around with my bloody emotions. I can't wait to sell him. He's driving me absolutely crazy. Assistant manager Michael Lindman believes that the player no longer wants to leave the club in order to join Shakhtar as they no longer appear to be interested in his services. So basically Shakhtar said, no, we don't want him either. We've seen the trouble. He's wrecking Aston Villa. I don't want him to come here and wreck Shakhtar as well. So... He's not happy to stay after causing all that havoc and causing that terrible form throughout the season and the poor morale. Um, what is the board? What is the morale at the moment? It was 2% in the previous episode. It's now 4. It's doubled. So we've doubled our morale to 4. But, yeah, have a look at this. Yeah, he's still, still annoying me. 2 to 3 months he's out for. So even if we could sell him... He wouldn't go because he'd fail his medical because of his injury. He's torn a hamstring on the last couple of days of the season. Oh, he's driving me mental. That'll take me to what, June, July, August. Almost, yeah, I mean, the beginning of July, beginning of August. It's going to be tight to sell him, you know. We're going to hope that, hopefully he, obviously when their injury thingy goes to um, return into fitness soon and it's only yellow. And all that stuff. Hopefully that will allow us to sell him. And hopefully he's back in two months and not three. Because I need, I have to get rid of him. His value's decreased again. He's actually only got two years left on his contract as well. So I, I just got to get rid of him. Um, now, before I go into a season review, the consortium takeover. So if I was to go to the scouting thing, this is one thing that I really I forgot about. And Mitchell Visor from... Bayern and I wanted to make an offer we can't, there's an embargo in place the Aston Villa board are not willing to sign players while the club is in the process of a takeover, this embargo will be lifted when this uncertainty is resolved, so then I get a notification from the board Aston Villa chairman demands end to takeover saga chairman Randy Lerner has told the club's potential new owners to speed up their takeover of the club to ensure that the manager Tom Campbell can operate in the forthcoming transfer window Lerner told mirrorfootball.co.uk that he believes that the club could be hurt by a lack of activity in the transfer market and has threatened to pull the plug on the takeover if an agreement cannot be reached very soon. Mr. Lerner, Randy, I 100% agree that it needs to hurry up, but please don't pull the plug. I need new owners. I need people that are going to invest. Now, the transfer window opens on the 9th, as I said, so five days. They've got five days and hopefully it's all sorted and through by then. Because I have so many players to sell. So we'll go through the players to sell. Then we'll do a little bit of a seasonal review. Now, I'm going to go through these all one by one. So, Gujan, If I can find a young, great potential goalkeeper that's sort of a reasonable level already. I will let I will let Gujan go. Steer will be our backup. Steer, um, Zimmerman will probably loan out and try to sell him for more money in the future. Clark's not good enough. He will definitely go. Vlar has been poor all season. He will definitely go. And he's, the fact that he's captain isn't great either when he's playing poorly. Lowton will become back up to a new right back if Zimmerman leaves. I'd like to find a first team right back. Bakuna is very versatile and I do like him, but he's not quite the level I'm aiming for. So we'll probably loan him out and try and get his value up before we sell him. Enrique will hopefully be a backup left back to a new first team left back as I don't want Ali Sissoko. So Ali Sissoko will go. Um, the Romero brothers, well, not, they're not brothers, but the, the Romero guys will definitely stay. Ashley Westwood's definitely got to go. Carlos Sanchez has been rubbish all season. Can't stand him. He's got to go. And Zogby is on something like 53, 56 grand a week. So it's too, the wages of him, of his ability are way too high. 
Um, Carlos Gill, I'm debating what to do with him still. I did mention in the previous episode that I was wondering what to do because I don't really play someone in the number 10, but I don't really feel he can play anywhere else but in the number 10. So we'll probably loan him out and hope his value goes up if he was to go. I think, yeah, like I said, if he was to go, he'd definitely be on loan. Get his value up. He's only 22. Delph, unless we can find a young attacking midfielder to play um, a second fiddle to um, to Verratti, might let Delph go. Um, we've got um, Romero on the left as a ball winning midfielder. Could keep Delph actually as a second choice ball winning midfielder. That's where I'd like to play him naturally. Joe Cole, luckily for us, he's retiring, so he will definitely go. Simao is also retiring. He will go too, so that's a nice little save in there. Saviola's moan about first-team football, which is fair enough because he's third choice for us um, behind Zapata and, unfortunately, the prick that's Benteke. So Benteke will go as well, and then Zapata will also go um, as he is on loan, so he'll return to his club. So these guys will all disappear. So this will be... Um, this is, it would be our under twenty, sort under twenty one. So um, we want to clear the selection. We've got loads of people just started moaning about um, being not down to the reserve team. It's fine. This, I've just saved before. I've done this update, so um, ignore that. Um, let's clear the entire team selection. Uh, let's go to the under twenty ones. So where are we? Go back to the squad. So yeah, this is like what the team looks like at the moment. Is this the t yeah, so there's loads of players that are obviously missing. Um, I don't know why Zapata, Saviola and the other guys haven't gone to the reserves. That's weird. Anyway, um, yeah, so it's a very, very small squad, so we have need a lot of investment going forward. Um, some of the guys that are on the transfer list that have caught my eye. Um, these are the guys that are expiring at the end of the month. So for the transfer list, um, we've got... Who have we got? Ooh, Bernardo Silva is a good player. I quite like him. He's a good player all round. Um, although there's the number 10 dilemma again. Mark Stender is in there. Uh, who else have we got? That's probably it at the minute. Hopefully a lot of players will join the transfer list towards the end of the season. Um, Jesse Lingard's on there. That's strange. Derida's not bad. Coquelin's okay. Um, so yeah, but there's obviously a lot of players on Bosman's that we'll be targeting as well. Um, so fingers crossed we can try and get some of them in but we have to get this embargo over first simple as that now seasonal review so let's go back to the schedule we'll start off with the cup competitions so we'll start off in the FA Cup where we didn't even make it past the FA Cup third round Blackburn beat us at Villa Park 2-0 an absolutely diabolical result terrible performance we played a reasonably strong team as well and we lost 2-0 to Blackburn uh, this is Championship Blackburn. Jordan Rose with both the goals, um, who's an absolute beast on FM anyway. So, I mean, it's, the goal score is not the, the problem. It's the fact that it's 2-0 and we lost and we were knocked out. So the board weren't too happy with that as we were targeted to reach the fifth round. So we definitely have to do better than that next season. Capital One Cup, we did okay actually. We reached the semi-final against Man City, then was unfortunately beaten 4-1 on aggregate. Um, we beat Notts County on penalties in the second round. In the third round, we played QPR, beat them 3-0. Fourth round, we beat Reading 2-0. And then Blackburn, after they beat us, it, well, they, they got us the revenge against us in the FA Cup. We actually beat them 2-1 in the quarter final. Um, and then, obviously, the 4 one good result in this against City. So, we almost had a chance to go to Wembley. Almost had a potential chance to um, get a cup, um, which would have been amazing in the first season. But it wasn't to be. But I'm not too disappointed with that. Capital One Cup semi-final. We were targeted for the fourth round. Uh, so we've, we've done really well in that. In regards to the league, we've done really well at the beginning of the season. Well, after this period, if you like. Um, and So the middle period, I mean, look here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six wins in a row. Um, and then it sort of fell away a little bit towards the end. No, this is, the other, this is definitely the other way. Yeah, sorry. Um, so yeah, we're rubbish here. Um, we've done really well in the middle and it was okay actually um, a lot of big results I think one of the key things that was great for us we beat a lot of big teams um, we drew with City 1-1 we actually beat Southampton 1-0 who were very good on the game um, we beat Arsenal 1-0 Liverpool was a, a bit frustrated 3-1 loss we beat Chelsea 2-1 we actually did the double over them which I'll come on to in a second 
Um, who else have we got? We lost 2-0 to United. We drew 1-1 with Tottenham. Beat Newcastle. Lost to our rivals, West Brom. Beat Everton 2-0. Um, beat Southampton. Did the double over them. 3-1. Beat City 2-1. So they didn't beat us in the Prem at all. Um, lost to Arsenal. Drew 3-3 with massive game for the neutral great game for the neutrals and free free draw against Liverpool. Um, we then beat Chelsea one nil. Um, so did the double over them as I said. Uh, drew with United one one. Um, do -do -do -do. Tottenham we lost one nil. Everton we lost four one. That's probably the worst result of the season if, if I'm honest. And then beat our rivals West Brom. So there's some big games in there that we actually did quite well in, which was good. Especially the big teams had a good record against the big teams. Which ultimately helped us a lot in the season. Um, as you can see, that I mentioned earlier, uh, finishing sixth place with 61 points. Um, in regards to the finances, they're a little bit better now. We're 14 million, 14.6 million in the balance. Um, 29 is well, a projected balance of 29.18. Um, we actually only just scraped financial fair play, and um, I did previously mention in other episodes. Um, it was by some we was like minus seven million or something our balance and it could have been maximum of minus fourteen million, so we're seven million away from probably getting a points deduction um, or a, a penalty in 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 next season. So um, yeah, going back to the finances, we've got a lot of stuff that should be coming in next season. Hopefully sponsorships will go up due to being in the Europa League. Uh, TV money should go up as well in the Europa League. Uh, hopefully we can do better in the cups, which we'll do. Well, via TV money, sponsorships, gate receipts, um, also um, obviously prize money for winning different things, running games and reaching further levels as well. Then if we can sign some more caliber players of the same caliber as uh, Marco Verratti, shirt sales will increase. I might try and target a foreign player, especially an Asian player, um, to help out with some of the finances. Um, so yeah, we got some trips going on. Hopefully, I think we're doing a preseason in America again. Um, so hopefully that will increase our, our stature there. We're gonna get some more scouts in, more staff in, and hopefully improve all aspects of the game, improve our training facilities, improve our youth facilities even more. Lots of work to be done. Um, my prediction, well, my my thoughts for next season. Um, I'd like to do a little bit better in the FA Cup, obviously. Capital One Cup, if we can match that, it would be great. Um, Europa League, I'd like to reach the quarterfinals. I'd like to get out of the group stage. Um, it depends on the type of players that we can get in the transfer window. Uh, the league, I'm aiming for Europa League again. I think the third season will be the big season where we push for top four, if I'm honest. I don't think the teams are the right level as of yet. Um, it does need building. We do need a little bit of work before I think that we can break that top four barrier. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. The tactic hasn't changed. It's still going for the 4-1-2-2-1. Um, yeah, so let's fingers well fingers crossed this consortium takeover. It doesn't take too long. Hopefully it's nice and quick and we get some a big transition in players that are going in and out. Um, so that's pretty much been episode number 10. Episode number 11 will be at the end of the transfer window. No, sorry, at the end up until the first day of the season so it'll be before our first game in the league um, obviously there's no fixtures up as of yet so should have well we'll have news on the takeover whether it's been completed or not completed um, loads of news hopefully on incomings and outgoings via transfers that'll be coming up then as well um, and yeah so hopefully a fresh new look squad in the next episode uh, the next episode obviously we're up Monday Wednesday and Friday so the next episode will be on Wednesday. So I'll see you guys then. Feel free to give the video a like if you've enjoyed it. Feel free to subscribe to the channel if you like the content. Um, get your suggestions in below. Let me know what you want to cover in the next episode or in over next season. If you want me to go into more detail over next season, please let me know. I do. I don't want this. I'm trying to make this as uh, differentiate between episodes as much as I can. Um, but yeah, this has been episode number ten. Um, and yeah, I'll see you in episode number 11. Take care guys. Cheers.